Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're jumping back into Avengers X-Men Eternals Judgment Day. And man, this one is action packed from front to back. And it's here we find out if Tony, Makari, Cersei, and the others can create a new god to change the rules before the Hex completely takes Krakoa off the map. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so for this one, we jump right back in from what we had seen in Judgment Day Part 1, when Druig had released the Hex during his broadcast to the people of Earth when he told the world that mutants were a threat, so the Hex, who are Eternals, they're gonna handle it. But also keep in mind, through the course of that message, Druig, he was very political with his approach of using devices instead of telepathy, as well as his message of telling the people of Earth, do not fear the Hex. And these six are not towering death machines, they're one of us, they're here to help which immediately caused celebration from a number of the humans and we know because we saw the reaction of the protesters who were just overjoyed that the Eternals were here to save the day. And it's like for me, I understand that this story is going to have a number of things that are a stretch of the imagination. But when I seen the reaction of this crowd with just overwhelming joy in response to an Eternals announcement and it had me thinking like are these people really excited about the Eternals? or are they hoping that a lot of mutants are gonna die? But then after this, we then jump over to six different civilians. Who on the surface, they seem random, but they're very important within the scope of the story. And as we visit each one, we visit them during the time of Druig's announcement. And with doing so, we get a bit of their take or more or less their reaction in the moment that it was announced. And for the first one, we got a guy named Tom who's just brushing his teeth, getting ready for bed while wearing a brew two shirt. And just as a bit of a side thought, I'm not sure if the shirt is a reference to the comic book character within the comics or if it's a reference to Howard Lindley, who was a scientist back in Tales of Suspense issue 22, who had been thinking of the comic book character when he was struck by an atomic ray that had blended his thoughts into reality, which transformed him into the character Brutu. And it's a good thing that the song Body Crazy Curvy Wavy wasn't out at the time, because Howard might have seen some different results. But either way, back to the civilians. From left to right, we start with Tom, and when he hears the announcement, he's like, good for the Eternals. Someone needed to do something, and from there he just goes to bed. And then next we have Katrina in Vancouver, to where for her, when she hears this, she's on the side of the mutants. So she sends out a ton of tweets, and she gets quite a bit of a positive reaction, because a number of other people are retweeting what she's saying, and deep down she wishes that these retweets could be a shield over Krakoa, even though she knows realistically that they won't. And then thirdly, we go to Mumbai, where we find Arjun who over the course of his life, he's been through a lot and he's survived a lot. And with him hearing about the announcement and the Hex, he just thinks to himself, the heroes will save us, they always do. And then after him, we go to Daniela in Sao Paulo, to where for her, she's been very optimistic because just yesterday, she was thinking of how nice it would be to be a mutant and how great it would be with free everything, beaches, immortality. But after hearing the announcement from Druig, she then starts to think, well, okay, at least the internals informed us humans. And for the fifth civilian, we go to Jada in New York, who we had seen in issue one with her being among the protesters because she lost her daughter and she didn't think it was fair that the mutants only had immortality while the rest of the world just had to suffer loss but with her hearing Druig's message she does not agree that genocide is the answer and then last but not least we then go to Yokohama Japan where we find Kenta to where for him his parents are concerned about the tidal waves that have been created because of the hex but for him he just doesn't care but then later he changes his gamer tag to Hex Blaster in his favorite shooter and shortly after that he gets banned. <laughs> Which is crazy because everyone he knows and loves could possibly get wiped out by a tidal wave and it's at this time that he gets kicked off the game. And it's like man, can he get a little XP before he's X'd out? Like give the kid a break. But then after this we then go over to Exodus and the other mutants at Krakoa. But as we do, keep in mind those six civilians because they are a significant part to this story. And it's here where we jump in where we actually pick up from Immortal X X-Men issue 5, which is an issue that takes place during Judgment Day issue 1, when we had seen Druid use the Unimind to attack the Quiet Council in an attempt to distract them, assassinate the Five, and destroy Arbor Magna. But through the course of this issue, with it starting just before the attack, within that meeting of the Quiet Council, with the council members discussing their awareness of the abduction of Mr. Sinister, even though they weren't sure at the time if this was a kidnapping or an abduction, with it happening in relation to the destruction of a small town called Little Hollow, that had taken place in Eternals issue 11, which at the time was shortly after Thanos had become the Prime Eternal. But at this point, with the Quiet Council not having all the information and really just piecing things together, throughout the course of this meeting and also during the attack, from the Unimind, we get a number of moments where Exodus has a series of flashbacks, which was super cool to see because Exodus has been around for centuries. 
And I mean, Apocalypse did put Exodus to sleep for the better part of a thousand years, but even still, Exodus has seen quite a bit in his time. But throughout the course of this, with us following Exodus through these flashbacks, all the way through to medieval France and him fighting in the Crusades, to where he had later then met Apocalypse, who had then enhanced his powers, only for him later to then turn on Apocalypse. But through the course of this, we're taking on a quick rundown journey through his life, where we see him as a crusader, as a herald, as an acolyte. But regardless of these many changes and who we'd seen him become over the years, we're shown how every time he made his decision, he had thought it through and he made it align with his faith. And with how this is done, it shows us that this method of reasoning, it's always followed Exodus all the way through to today, to the moment where Druig released the Hex to annihilate the mutants in Krakoa. And for Exodus, the way that he sees this, the Eternals, there are dragons that he has to slay. Because now in this new world that the mutants have established, he's the Pope of a new church, but he's also a knight and a dragon slayer at that. So initially when he goes into this fight yelling on guard, <laughs> it sounds like I'm saying on God. But when Exodus goes for one of the members of the Hex, who I believe goes by the name of Sign, S-Y-N-E, but with Exodus going towards this huge thing, he knocks it off of the island with one shot. <laughs> on God. And from here, Jean telepathically reaches out to Scott and she's like, okay, Exodus got one. How are you guys doing? And Scott's like, man, not gonna lie, we need some help. But then Captain America's shield comes flying through and shortly after, they're met by the arrival of the Avengers. And initially, Exodus, he doesn't want the Avengers' help because they're not mutants and this isn't their fight. But with Magic being here and also being one of the great captains of Krakoa, it's really her call whether the Avengers can join or not. And the way she sees it, the more the merrier. And if Exodus has an issue with that, he can just schedule a meeting with the Quiet Council. But nonetheless, Captain America and the rest of the Avengers are happy to join because him and the others know that it'll be good for the world to see them working together. And so after this, we then head over to Avengers Mountain with Tony, Ajax, and Makari along with the kidnapped Mr. Sinister. And at this point, they're still putting their heads together on how to make a god. And Tony can't help but admit that Reed Richards is gonna be green with envy when he finds out that Tony had something to do with this. But from here on Krakoa, Captain America and Cyclops get things organized with Captain America asking like, okay, how can we help? And Cyclops tells Cap that many of the mutants on Krakoa, they're non-combatant and a lot of them are just mutants. And for that reason, they want to get them to the defensive walls. And when saying this, Cyclops tells Cap to handle the Hex and get people to safety, while him and the others protect Resurrection. And it's here where Cap tells Cyclops that he's on it, no problem. But after everything they've been through, he wishes that Cyclops could have told them more, instead of keeping secrets. And with Cap saying this, this is also a reference to a more recent conversation between the two of them, when Cap had questions about Krakoa and their suspicious jump in numbers, but Scott was very short with them. And it's like now with Cap saying that I wish you would have told us more before after everything we've been through and Cyclops responds like after everything how could we and it's like man like when Cyclops said that Captain, he couldn't say nothing. There was no response to that. But also with this fight continuing and just amplifying the earthquakes and waves that the Hex were already causing, this had then sent huge waves over towards the Philippines, while also creating tsunamis that are heading towards the east coast of USA, Australia, and Japan. And with Jean seeing this, she tells Scott and Scott tells Cap to go deal with the fallout. So overall, that'll be one less thing that they have to worry about. And just before Cap goes, he tells Scott thank you and that the world will know that these guys are heroes. But as the Avengers go to deal with that. Exodus sees all these guys leaving and he sends a telepathic message just to the council like look these guys are abandoning us and this is more or less a reminder of who they really are and for some of these guys with seeing this they're not getting the whole story and it's here where Destiny tells Nightcrawler that what they're seeing is to be expected because she sees the future and she remembers the past and in either case mutants have always stood alone but then it's from here where we jump back to the construction of the new god where we find Tony harvesting from the thumbprint of Erish and the Judge we see Sin go back to what I believe was San Francisco in Uncanny X-Men Volume 2 when he hacked the head of a dreaming celestial and he returns to the site to dig for remains and find the shattered fragment of the heart of a dream. But then we find Makari harvesting pieces of the Asgardian Destroyer, which long ago was created by Odin to combat the Celestials. And on top of that, we then have Cersei, who's made her way to the other Eternals who stand against Druig, to where for them, they've made their way to Lemuria, the city of the Deviants, whose hands down seen more Celestial wrath than anyone else. But with them going there, they performed a seance in order to get a number of testimonies from the Deviants that have been slaughtered because this is needed for the heart of the God that they're putting together. Because also the reasoning behind doing this, aside from the the obvious which is stopping the Eternals, it's also for them to create a better God. 
And while this is unfolding through the course of this, we get much of this narration from that particular God. So there's a bit of a teaser there, but also we're told more or less to keep in mind that with all these people coming together and making this new God, they're essentially making this God in their own image. And with knowing this, it really lets us know ahead of time that this is a dangerous combination. And I don't, and I'm not just saying that just because of Mr. Sinister, but probably more so for Tony Stark, because they're using his body as a blueprint for the nervous system of this new God. God. And I mean, the look on his face is just like, obviously, <laughs> wait till Reed sees this. And they made the choice of Tony because previously he's piloted a dead celestial. He was recently possessed by the power cosmic and his body still remembers all this. But even still, I'm sure there's a few other things his body remembers too. But through the course of this God forming, it also says, if I have a father, it is Tony Stark. But then it's from here where we then go back into the battle and we find Exodus going full speed into Sign, the member of the Hex that we'd seen him hit before, because not only had he weakened her armor, but him and Jean had also figured out with their telepathy that all of the members of the Hex are sisters, and one of the members is trying to heal Sign. so right away, Exodus is just like, oh, if it can be healed, then it can be killed. And he just flies right into the neck of Sign. And with Exodus being just stupid powerful, he's an Omega level mutant with telepathy, telekinesis, telekinetic concussive blast, electromagnetic blast, and he just flies into this thing and he sets it off. And seconds before he detonates, he hears the voice of Sign saying, please don't. But Exodus is like, bump that. And he detonates, destroying the two of them. And initially the mutants celebrate because they know Exodus will be right back. But inside of the machine, sign is being resurrected as well but with this happening unlike exodus who's having his memories restored from a backup with him coming back he's not going to remember the last final moments before he had died but for sign with her being an eternal she comes back remembering everything but also at this moment we then go back to the six civilians where we find tom who's like this is all the mutants fault we'll show them and katrina she's still tweeting and trying to help by sending out tweets and raising awareness though i'm sure the whole world's kind of aware at this point but then in the case of arjun in his case, we then find that he is dead because once again, the Eternals have that dark secret because every time an Eternals resurrected, it costs a human life. And this time to bring back Sign, it costs the life of Arjun. And as we go to the others, we find Daniela, who at this point is working her third job because even with this battle that's shaking the world, she still got bills to pay. <laughs> Man, I felt that one. But then next we have Jada, who again does not want to see more death. And when she sees more people heading to the protest with freshly painted signs, she still doesn't know exactly what she wants, but she knows that this isn't it. And then for the last one, we then go back to Kenta who again has been banned from his favorite online game. So he's just leaning out the window, taking blurry pictures of Captain Marvel punching waves. But for Kenta, he's just a kid. He's not thinking of life or death. He's just living. But at this point, we find that the X-Men have infiltrated the Eternal Armories and cut the Hex's power supplies in an attempt to stop them. But with doing so, Phoebe, which is the big green one, who's also a team healer, for those who play Overwatch, her fauna has been interrupting the Krakoan gates, making them no longer operational. And as if this wasn't enough, another hex gate opens and Sign re-enters the lobby. And when Sign touches down, like the look on everyone's faces, they're just like, we're done. Because when Sign comes back, she's just destroying Kokoa faster than they can evacuate. So by all means, this is a terrifying moment because not only are they watching death like on its way in seconds, but also in moments, the destruction of their hope of resurrection. But with this happening in the rest of the mutants, knowing that there's nothing else that they can do in this moment, Nightcrawler just grabs Destiny and he just prays. And when he does, a god answers. And when it rises, it immediately tells the Hex to cease. And when doing so, the Hex, they cease and they get the Hex out of there. And the reason why this works, again, is because of the plan of Ajak and Makari. Because when the Celestials originally made the Eternals, the Celestials set the terms, they made the laws. So now with them creating a new god, a new Celestial, who's technically refurbished, but you know what I'm trying to say. But with this new god, they can now make changes that they otherwise could not have before. And so with everyone seeing this work and seeing the Hex leave, they start to celebrate again. But then the Celestial's like, nah, shut the hell up. And he tells them, people of Earth, listen. You are bickering children. This planet is ruined. You have attacked with unrelenting unkindness towards one another. You leave me no option. This is your judgment day. You have 24 hours to justify yourselves. You will be judged individually. You will be judged as a collective. If there is more that is just than wicked, you will live. But if you are found lacking, there will be no tomorrow. And with saying this, he holds up the thumbprint of Irishim. And when time's up, the world's either gonna get a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And so now real quick, I wanna give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. 
And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so you can go to patreon.com slash dopespill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.